Hi, my name is Caitlin Oster. I am a senior MFA student with the David Lynch Program for Screenwriting at Maharishi International University, and I'm the creator of the Letters to Loretta series that is featured on Sandbox News. My grandparents set the bar really high for me growing up because they were just the epitome of love at first sight, and they had been together for 70 years at the time of my grandmother's death in 2007. My grandparents met in 1936 at the height of the Great Depression on Von Dolan Playground in Jamaica, Queens. My grandfather was accompanied that day by his identical twin, Arthur, and he saw Loretta swinging by herself, and he knew right away that he was going to marry her. Harold and Loretta did court for years throughout the Great Depression and into the start of World War II. Eventually, they were married in June of 1943, but only three days later, my grandfather was called to war to go fight Germans in a B-17 as a tech sergeant and top turret gunner. Before he had left, him and his brother couldn't agree on where they wanted to go, and his brother settled to be deployed to the Pacific, and my grandfather ended up in Germany. There was this moral aspect to what he was doing because he knew he was doing the right thing and he was protecting his family and his parents and his new wife, but he was also the son of German immigrants. He was the youngest of 10 and his parents had a home there at one point. And now he was in a B-17 dropping bombs on factories to deter ball bearings from being made so that tanks wouldn't get produced. So in the end of July in 1943, my grandfather is shot down the whole left wing of the plane was blown off and he and his nine other men bailed out of a bomb shaft because they had no way of escaping the plane. He landed in a small village and was discovered by SS who ridiculed him for having a German name, called him a traitor. He was put on a cattle car and shipped straight to Stalag 17B, which was one of the most notorious and overcrowded prison camps for enlisted men during World War II. These two years, he was completely cut off from the world, so much so that in November of 1943, his twin was killed in the Pacific on a PT boat, and because of censorship issues, my grandfather was not able to be informed that his brother was dead. And he didn't get to find out until exactly two years later when he found himself back in the United States. And through these two years, juxtaposed between hopelessness and the promise of coming home to his wife, the Nazis did everything that they could to break the human spirit. These men were subjected to beatings, malnourishment, starvation, disease, and the only thing that Harold had was this thread of hope in the form of love letters home to his wife and these letters that were passed down to me. It was in these letters that I found hope and I found an immense amount of strength in the human will to survive and the power of the written word in the form of love letters where he says things to her like, the noonday sun that melts the snow brings thoughts of you, and how easily my heart would melt if your rays could reach me. And he wrote that during one of the coldest winters in Europe. So the Letters to Loretta series initially began as a catharsis. When I lost my grandfather in the winter of 2019, I found myself completely overrun with grief, and I thought that the easiest way to get through it was to live through his love, instead of wallowing in sadness. Eventually, the series and the stories turn into a declaration of the human will to survive. It also shows the grit of war and how it affects us even through the ripples of generations. So the longer I spent in this story, the more profound of a message that came through of the human experience that my grandfather endured for those two years. And now, not just as his granddaughter, but as a professional writer, I feel responsible for his story and for pulling these memories out of obscurity and protecting them from being lost. And I love talking about my grandpa and I love talking about my grandmother. I get to share stories about my grandparents' love and I get to share these really impactful and important war stories and this history that exists in this little shoebox full of paper. I'm eternally grateful for Alex Hollings and the staff at Sandbox News for allowing me to curate such a special and important and unique piece because I feel like the message on a social scale is just as important as it is on a personal one. I hope the weight of my grandfather's words 
and the weight of my own carry a profoundness that is not lost on us. And as Alex Hollings and I had come to the realization, the humanity that exists in between the breaths of those who are affected by war, 